Hello everyone, this is Joe Neville and welcome to video 3 in my series about AOS CX basics. So in this video we are going to look at layer 2 config, essentially configuring ports for VLANs. I know I know this is the kind of thing that people do all the time, but it is worth looking at I think. It's something that is very tricky for beginners. And as we all know, layer two loops are one of the worst things that you can do in the networking world and uh, cause major problems on networks. So good VLAN hygiene is really important. Here's my network then. So I've got two layer three nodes. I've got an Ubuntu server and a Windows 10 client over here. They're both on the subnet 192.168.150.0 slash 24. Ubuntu is dot one and Windows is dot two. And what I'm going to do is send a ping from dot one so that will hit, come down and it will hit my aruba 8320 so that's an aos cx device now that isn't configured in the subnet it doesn't have a layer 3 interface in this subnet but it does have configuration for vlan 150 so what we're going to do is switch from this port here to this egress port so it's one slash one slash one across this physical link to my second CX box so that's an A320 as well again doesn't have a layer 3 interface and that is going to switch up to across VLAN 150 to the Windows client and because it is a ping so uh, an ICMP echo request if everything's configured here Correctly, we are going to have an echo reply that will go back and then we'll see that the pings are successful. So what I'm going to focus on is the configuration across this link and the various different permutations that you can have for access and for trunk. And I should say, if you're familiar with Aruba switching in the context of Aruba OS switch, then a trunk is where you have multiple ports bonded together. Now with Aruba OS CX, trunk actually means a port that will switch multiple 802.1Q tagged frames. So essentially a trunk can carry multiple VLANs and an access port will carry one VLAN but it will be untagged traffic. Okay, so we'll go into the details of that. And to illustrate this further, I'm going to sniff the traffic on this port here. So I've got Wireshark set up to mirror the traffic that's coming into this port across to my node. So we will be able to see whether the traffic is tagged or not. Okay, so let's dive into it. Here's my setup. Top left, I have my Aruba AOS CX 8320-1. And top right, I have my A320-2. So these are the two switches we're going to configure. Bottom left, I have my Ubuntu server. This is the source of the traffic. So I'm going to ping from here through the network. So it's 150.102. So this is a Windows client that is connected to the A320-2. Let's send. So that will fail because I haven't configured the interconnected link at the moment. And then finally, bottom right, I have Wireshark running on my Mac. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror the port between the two CX devices so that we can see the traffic that's running across that connected link. I am filtering on ICMP because that's all we're interested in and you'll be able to see whether there's a VLAN attached to that traffic. That will make a bit more sense when this is running. So let's start with A320-1 then. I'll show you the configuration. Now, this is pretty much the configuration from the first two videos in the series, other than this 1 slash 1 slash 2, which I've added. Now, that's connected off ultimately to the VM here, the Ubuntu, the source of the traffic. And the point is that the Ubuntu is a VM which is sending tag traffic. So the ICMP echo requests are being sent with 802.1Q tags on them in VLAN 150. So that's what we need to switch. OK, right now let's get configuring dash one. I'll go into conf. You can see by default, we only have VLAN 1, so I need to add VLAN 150. That's all we need to add. We, we don't need to do any more with that. We don't need to create a layer 3 interface for VLAN 150, because all we're going to do is switch it. Now, let's have a look at the interface. So 1 slash 1 slash 1. 
I will show you that. One slash one slash one. Okay, and here it is if I scroll up. Now, by default, the front panel ports, one slash one slash one onwards, they are admin down. If you recall from the first video, or if you haven't watched that, please do. In that, I show the interface management, the out of band management. Now, that's up by default. If you do a take the switch straight out of the box, that will be up and it will accept an IP address, either V4, or V6 via DHCP, or you can statically configure it. That ports up to aid with zero touch provisioning, but the rest of the front panel ports. They are down, okay, so by default. So what we need to do is open that up. And the other interesting thing is that they are layer three interfaces by default. So if I was going to configure this, let's go in here, I could put an IP address directly on the interface, okay, so V4 or V6, but that's not what we're going to do. Also, I'll show you actually, I can just do a show run interface. Here. Okay, so this is the default configuration. Right, so what we need to do is convert this port from L3 to L2. We do that with no routing. And if I show you that configuration again, what you see, I've added that in, but then automatically we've been put into the default L2 state, which is VLAN access one. Now, if I show you the interface then you'll see this has changed we're still admin down i'll open it in a moment you'll see the vlan mode there and the access vlan against that right so let's no shut that and we should put it into the correct vlan and we do that with vlan access 150 okay good let's have a look at it again VLAN mode access, access VLAN 150. So the admin state is up, but it's down. That's because the other end that we're connected to is down. So we need to go over and configure that. Here is dash two. Let's do a show run on there. That's the basic. So we need to configure this like we did dash one, add in the VLAN, go to the interface. So no routing v VLAN access 150 and let's no shut that. Now no, that won't work at the moment because we haven't configured the egress port which is the one that is connected to the Windows server. So that's essentially the same configuration. I need VLAN access 1 and let's do a no shut. And now you can see that the traffic is successful. So we are able to flow, but we don't see anything on Wireshark because I haven't mirrored. So this is outside of the flow for just getting the network configured, but I wanted to show you this. So for mirroring the port, what we do is show mirror, sorry, it's mirror session one in global config. We put in the source, which is interface one slash one slash one and I just want the receive yeah I'll do show you that so you can choose both receive transmit we're just going to have the receive then we put the destination interface which is one slash one forty eight we need to enable that and we also need to no shut that interface okay let's make that bigger then so we can see what's going on. Right, there's the destination. You'll be able to see the destinations 101 and it is 102. And we'd have no VLAN across there. Traffic's running fine, we're mirroring. Okay, now, the next part that I wanted to do is just to show you the different permutations that you can have with the traffic. So at the moment, we don't have any tags running across this. Let's do a show run interface. 
Okay, so let's move this from access where there's no tra tag, let's move it to trunk. So the way that we do that is we go VLAN trunk and we just put in allowed. It's good hygiene to just allow the VLANs that you want to flow. I'm going to put in 150 there. Show run interface one, show you what that looks like. Okay, so I put in that and the native VLAN by default is one. So now essentially the switches are misconfigured because I've got a trunk at one end which is sending tag traffic, which did flow for a short while, but then it is rejected on the other end. So we were hitting the interface, but then once it's timed out, now the ping is failing. So I need to configure the other end with the same. So let's go here and we'll go VLAN trunk loud 150. And then, as you can see, the ping starts again. So both ends show, uh, we've got it up already, show, show, run, int. Now you can see they've both got the same configuration. So that's good hygiene You, if you're going to have access both ends. Because the point is that it's only locally significant. So you can misconfigure both ends of the link and that's a major cause of problems within networking so if you've got an access one side and a trunk at the other that can cause some problems and some failures it's much better to have trunk one end and trunk at the other end and making sure that you're doing something like allowing only the vlans that you want to run across that link and make sure this is an important point that you have the right native vlan because that can cause some problems which i will illustrate now so if we go back to vlan access 150 over here but on this other side i'll keep it as a trunk but i'm going to change the native vlan so vlan trunk native so you see it's now timing out if we go 150 now that works, okay? So you'll see that works and also that there's no VLAN tag. So essentially what we have is we ha we're in a state where one end is access, it's switching traffic that doesn't have a tag in 150. Now, if we, if we run it through from left to right, so essentially the traffic's coming in, it's tagged as 150. I've got a trunk, we've got a misconfiguration each end but the trunk is sending traffic so natively, which means it doesn't have a tag on it, that's being sent across and that is being picked up as VLAN 150 and switched to 150. But the thing is, it's only locally significant. So it's very easy if you were to misconfigure this to make some kind of mistake here. Okay, so the thing is, if I had other VLANs, if I put this as vlan access one now that would be in vlan access one the traffic so it's, it's all failed but the traffic would be flowing and then it would be switched out of any ports on here that were in vlan one so that can be dangerous so you don't want to do things like this even though it works you should have the same configuration both ends of the link that's the best way to configure this So either VLAN access 150 or VLAN trunk if you want tag traffic. Okay, and if you'd like more information about that, the config guide for AOS CX goes into a lot of detail actually. So I'll put a link to this document in the description. If you jump down to VLAN interfaces, you see we have these examples. So for this is essentially what gave me the idea for this video. We have this example of the, an access interface and the different types of traffic, whether it's tagged or untagged. If that hits an access port, what would happen? So whether it's switched because it's got a VLAN ID that matches the access, so it's switched without the tag, or if it's untagged that comes in, then that's switched, of course, without a tag. But if a tag comes in which is different from the access VLAN, then it's not switched. And if we go further down, you can see 
trunk interface, you've got multiple examples, so native untagged VLAN, what would happen with the different types of traffic, and you've got native tagged VLAN. This is pretty confusing for beginners. It is basic stuff through years of experience with this stuff. I mean, lots of people treat it as kind of second nature, but so many faults and mistakes and L2 loops are created because of misconfiguration of VLANs. It's really easy if you've got one end configured with a trunk maybe and the other end's configured as access and somehow the traffic gets into the VLAN one, that's where you can really start seeing some problems with L2 loops. So I think it is worth looking at this in depth. Hopefully this has been a good refresher on that. But that's all I've got for this video. Please let me know whether you would like similar videos or some different. I've got some suggestions from the first two videos, which I will move on to. But I'm working through my way through these basic examples. I think in the next one, we'll look more at layer three, some routing protocols. And then we'll look at things like VSX and OSPF, BGP, etc, etc. But that's all for now. As I say, my name is Joe Neville. Thank you very much for watching. Please give me a like, dislike, sub to the channel, or leave a comment. All of those good things. But for now, thank you for watching and goodbye.